All right, welcome back to Ozark Garage. Today I want to talk about rivets. Specifically, pulled rivets, also known as pop rivets or blind rivets. These are your standard hardware store pulled rivets. Uh, they're also known as pop rivets because pop is a brand name that stuck, kind of like Kleenex. These are pretty handy for a variety of projects. Anytime you're connecting thin sheet metal to a frame or thin sheet metal to itself, uh, these are much handier than a screw which can work loose or you know nuts and bolts which are bulkier. These are really fast to install. Uh, you can use a pneumatic riveter like this or you can use a hand riveter, but they're not great for any kind of application where the back of the rivet's going to be exposed. And the reason for that is they're really, they're kind of ugly. They're not uniform and the hardware store variety generally speaking, isn't very strong. In fact, you'd be very, very hard pressed to find any kind of actual rating for shear strength or tensile strength on these rivets. The good news is though, you can buy better pulled rivets. Unfortunately though, you're probably gonna have to buy them online. You're not gonna find them at your local Home Depot. So this is an Avex brand pulled rivet. If you look at it very closely, you can see that it's got a uniform crush section in the middle. And so what this does is it allows this rivet to pull very tightly and hold very tightly. The stem is retained very snugly in there to prevent leaks. So these are much more leak resistant than your standard hardware store variety. Also on the inside of the project, the rivets have a much more uniform appearance. They look much nicer. So if you have a box or any kind of project where you can see the rivets on the inside, this is gonna look much, much nicer in addition to being a stronger, better rivet. So I first heard about these rivets when I was doing research for building a Zenith aircraft long before I bought my kit. And then when I actually took the rudder build class, I got to use them firsthand and realized how quick and easy they are to use. The Zenith method of using these rivets involves taking a flathead or countersunk rivet like this and then using a special riveting tip to pull it into a dome head shape. Zenith sells riveting heads for the riveting guns. Uh, I modified my own in the lathe, but what this does is this gives you a very strong, very tight pulled rivet that is also very, very quick to install. My Zenith Cruiser is held together with thousands of these, and these rivets are why it's so fast and easy to build a Zenith aircraft, because you don't have to have, you know, kind of a bucking tool on one side and be hammering the rivet on the other. You can literally pull these and go and just pull the stems out, dispose of the stems, and you're building an aircraft very, very quickly. I'm not saying these uh, soft rivets are bad by any means. Um, there are some applications where these are better than the Avex rivet. So if you're putting together any kind of plastic or soft material fiberglass, uh, the Avex rivets take enough force to set that you will actually deform the plastic, if not crush it, and some plastics will actually crack. So if you look at a Zenith aircraft, it's got plexiglass windshield and Lexan side doors. Uh, those are all held in with soft rivets because they take much less force to crush and they're perfectly adequate for that situation where it's not structural. Everywhere structural though, it's got an Avex rivet, either one of these aluminum ones, a stainless rivet, or it's got a traditional bucked aircraft rivet or solid rivet, if you will. All right, so let's do a quick walkthrough of how you would use these rivets for either a Zenith aircraft or really any other project where you wanna use a high strength pulled rivet. First thing we're gonna do is mark out a rivet line. And we're gonna follow the Zenith build standards here in that the first rivet needs to be at least 10 millimeters or 3 eighths of an inch from each edge. And then we're gonna space out the rivets evenly between them. Next, we're gonna use a Clico, which is a temporary rivet to hold the pieces together while we drill the next two holes. Here, we're using a 16th inch Clico because we're pilot drilling these with a number 40 drill bit. And so now we're gonna continue drilling and Clicoing. So if this was a long panel, for instance, uh, I like to put a Clico about every third hole and then gradually start opening them up to the next larger size. So next we're going to step up to a number 30 drill bit and then an eighth inch Clico, which is copper colored. Next process is going to be to remove the silver Clicos and open up the hole and replace it with a copper Clico. Now there's only three rivets here, so this isn't a huge line. So we're just going to do them one at a time. But if we said had 50 rivets in a row, 
we could do maybe two or three at a time as we went along and open up the holes and replace them with copper Clecos. The last step is going to be drilling these to final size, which is a number 20 drill bit for the 530 seconds Cleco we're going to use here. Once again, we continue the process of just removing Clecos, upsizing into the next hole, replacing it with the proper size Cleco until we get all the holes open to the correct size. Just a quick recap here, so the silver Clecos are 1 16th of an inch, the coppers are 8th, the black are 5 30 seconds, and the gold ones here are 3 16 We're not going to use the gold ones because we're not going that big in rivet size, uh, but the gold ones are pretty handy for like AN3 bolts or larger rivets. And Clecos aren't just handy for using with rivets, so if you're using any kind of sheet metal project where you're spot welding or um, any kind of overlapped joint, the Clecos can hold that joint together while you go back and weld it, and then you can just weld up those holes. It's really common in automotive bodywork to use Clecos for that. Another really handy tool for spacing out rivets is what's called a rivet fan. And as you can see here, you can lay out a line of rivets perfectly straight, perfectly spaced, very quickly, and then go through and drill your holes, replace them with Clecos, and then eventually rivet. So after getting all the holes drilled to final size, we're going to go through and remove all the Clecos and then deburr the holes. So these metal burrs here keep us from having panel to panel contact and that's what we want. We want both panels sandwiched together very tightly for a tight hold and friction, not just sheer strength of the rivet itself to hold the joint together. After everything's been fully deburred, now it's time to go back through and re cleco the panels back together. Uh, once again, I like to do about every third rivet, depending on how many rivets are spaced out and how tightly the panel needs to be held together. And work along the joint, replacing clecos with rivets, and pretty soon you'll have a fully riveted joint. Anyway, I hope that helps if you're thinking about using rivets for a project, be it an aircraft or whatever. Uh, if you have any questions, post it in the comments below, I'll answer what I can. Uh, otherwise, please like and subscribe, and thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.